We can truly rejoice this Sunday because in this wilderness in which we find ourselves, we have begun to encounter the Lord of the universe. Hello, this is Father Richard Childress, pastor of St. John Vianney Parish in Gallatin. The name of this Sunday, Latare Sunday, is a command. Latare, rejoice, right in the middle of the Lenten desert. What sort of peace and joy have we allowed to reign in our hearts? At the Last Supper itself, on the night he was betrayed, our Lord said to his disciples, Peace I give you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give. The peace and joy we have in Christ through the Holy Spirit goes beyond a mere emotional peace or the shallow happiness that the world has to offer. And in fact, as Lent reminds us, the peace and joy of Christ often takes a strange shape in this valley of tears through which we travel. At the heart of our faith, at the heart of reality, uh, is the transformation of what is truly horrible and the revelation of what is truly beautiful. Our Lord tells Nicodemus in the Gospel reading, just as Moses lifted up that hideous shape of the serpent in the desert and through this allowed the dying to be healed, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Our Lord speaks of both a royal enthronement as well as a horrific execution in a single breath. And we too call this day our Lord died, Good Friday. The author Flannery O'Connor, I think, summarizes this reality best when she writes, uh, There is nothing harder or less sentimental than Christian realism. The peace and rejoicing of the Catholic faith is deep, deep as the darkness of the world, and then deeper. If, on the other hand, we want to see and taste the peace and happiness that the world offers us, we have only to look at the Sunday's first reading. The error of the people of God was self-reliance and self-assuredness in distinction from God's will for them. They were feeling a sort of peace, a sort of happiness uh, for a while, secure in their own estimations without being actually faithful to their marriage covenant with God. It's the same spirit that has always been with us, even to this day, that of seeking to save our lives by our own means, of seeking to affirm myself at all costs, never bending a knee, never repenting, never humbly receiving God's merciful love, which will transform me if I will dare to let it embrace me. Happy for a time and standing at our own arm's length in the darkness outside the city of God. Can we imagine anything more horrific, more superficial, and ultimately more depressing? We Catholics don't rejoice this Sunday because there is no evil in the world or because we've managed to merely bolster our self-esteem. We call the wilderness what it is, a desert. However, we can truly rejoice this Sunday because in this wilderness in which we find ourselves, we have begun to encounter the Lord of the universe who has come out here to be with us in the desert, to be raised up, to heal us. We rejoice because this Christ is drawing us through his cross out of the desert into the Easter just around the corner. As the venerable Fulton Sheen once put it, unless there is a good Friday in your life, there can be no Easter Sunday. We embrace our Lord's cross, we carry our own crosses as well and follow after him because in him and through him and with him, we will even in this life taste and share among us the eternal life over which death and darkness have no power. May God strengthen us all in these final days of the Lenten season and may we all together arrive at Christ's Easter, truly enabled to rejoice.